Hello and welcome to podcast number nine, Mastering the Art of Real Estate. I am here today with my friend, Mickey Cardoza. She is out of our Corcoran Icon office in the Santa Rosa area. And um, I wanted to just introduce you to Mickey before we get started. Mickey started her career in real estate in 2001 after being a teacher for many years. Mickey continued to teach through real, through real estate and helping her clients navigate through the process of buying and selling property, which she loves so much. She has now been in real estate for 23 plus years. She grew her business. She was able to build out a team of her own called Mickey Moves Real Estate. She grew to three offices and close to 34 agents. In March 15th, 2021, she merged and partnered with a much larger real estate form, firm, Corcoran, as in Barbara Corcoran, real estate mogul, and one of the original Shark Tank investors, with over 24 offices in Northern California alone. The Northern California group is called Corcoran Icon Properties. She quotes, it is so rewarding to be affiliated with people who want to work together for the good of clients' needs to reach their goals in a spirit of learning and growing and excellent customer service. Mickey lives in Sonoma County, but her love for Humboldt remains strong and she continues to serve clients in both markets. In her role as Director of Education for Corker and Icon Properties, she helps all of her agents serve their clients. With Corker and Icon Properties and the mothership company, the Corcoran Group, her reach as a broker associate is worldwide, and she gives her, which gives her the ability to support clients anywhere. In her spare time, Mickey enjoys spending time with her amazing husband of 25 years, her adult children, three grandbabies, her two doodle dogs, her art, clients, and friends. She also loves to explore their local hiking trails and beaches, and she loves to cook. Mickey is a trusted real estate advisor, continuously growing to help more and more members of her community to enjoy a real estate experience that encompasses the whole experience from, tr from transforming space while building individual wealth through real estate. She practices what she does from all perspectives and truly loves the journey. I love hearing these stories about where agents came came from. And um, we've had teachers like yourself. We had a SWAT, a SWAT, um, uh, SWAT policeman down in San Diego. We had someone who came out of um, retirement. She was doing charity work. Uh, we had someone last week who had to get to do something because she was one of the people who unfortunate people who lost everything due to the Bertie Madoff scandal. So, and they were super close and you know who that person is, Mickey. Um, so Mickey, welcome to the show. Let's yeah. bring Mickey in. And so excited to have you here. Okay, I, I forgot to turn my ringer off. So excuse me in a minute, I'll turn that <laughs> off. Um, Mickey and I met in Nashville, Tennessee at the National Conference, which was really amazing. Adam, my husband and partner had met her. I think you referred him a client and her and I got connected in Nashville and had a wonderful experience. And as soon as I met Mickey, I knew we were going to, we were so much alike and I knew we'd become fast friends. So I have been up to visit her with my son, Chase, to visit her in Santa Rosa, to look at property. And she is a coach like myself, which makes this, um, meeting today so so enjoyable for me because you have so much to give so thank you so much mickey for being here <laughs> thank you for those kind words and even comparing because you're one of my idols so that really helps thank you you're welcome you're welcome so let's start with question number one everyone always wants to know how how and why you got into real estate so let's start there yeah, funny story. It was totally by accident. So summer of 2001, and I was going to take a break from real estate. We had a lot of young teens at home and I uh, just needed a, a break from teaching. And my I was planning to have a principalship so that I could um, just kind of move up in my in my education career. And uh, the family decided I should take the year off and just got to spend more time with the kids, walk on the beach, volunteer some more. And my next door neighbor was a real estate broker and had a company. And he said, you should try real estate. You'd be really good at it. And I said, sure, on the side for fun. I didn't even think of it as a career. I can't even imagine. I, I, I just think back to teaching days and I never brought a realtor into career day. What was I thinking? It's a real career. It's, it's a lifestyle. So I took my test on September 11th, 2001 
um, pinnacle day to take your exams and become a realtor. Uh, of course, the unfortunate events around the, the country and in New York at that day, um, I was the only one that ended up taking my test because I negotiated with the building monitors to stay and everybody else left and I passed it. So I was the only one who got my license that day in the whole state of California. Um, and then the industry just took off and I loved it. So I just kept going. I, I gave up my teaching career and, and moved to real estate. That's amazing. That is so crazy. And you were already negotiating. You hadn't even started real estate and you're negotiating. I'm taking this test. You're I'm taking this test. I studied too hard. I'm ready. My broker said, if I can negotiate that, I can negotiate probably anything. So. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's, um, we have, we, I think we have a lot of people who are interested in getting into real estate who like to listen to the podcast. And so, and as a coach, you're so helpful and knowledgeable. So I want to start today with, I have five taglines or five rules or five mantras that I live by and kind of in my business and kind of in my life. And so I want to know, do they resonate with you and what do they mean to you? So the first one is luxury is a service, not a price point. Yes, definitely. That resonates hard because my feeling is everyone deserves respect with their housing, everyone, no matter where they are on that spectrum. And so really understanding that we want to treat even our smallest uh, price point buyers with the utmost care and respect. And it comes back, it, you know, uh, speaking to the realtors out there, it comes back. I've seen um, some really low end leads uh, that come in with a question about something small that turn into multi million dollar projects over time. And um, and so I think every lead, every transaction is important to treat with the utmost care and respect, no matter what that price point. For sure, that resonates. Absolutely, I love it. I know. I just love that. Um, helping others gives success true meaning. And I know you're constantly helping people. <laughs> You know what's interesting? Um, I, there's everyone has a question in the back of their head. You know, like, am I good enough? Am I doing the right thing? How did it go after this? I'm sure I'll say, how did it go? How did we do? Uh, but one of the questions in the back of my head is constantly, how else can I help? How else can I help? How else can I help? And actually, as a realtor, that keeps me proactively seeking how I can help a client, which helps for follow up. And so if you just ask that question, how else can I help? I've adjusted it over time. How else can I help and still have a good time? So, <laughs> so I added so that little piece of that to make it a little bit more fun. It's so true because, yeah, well, I'll get to that. Well, now let's, I'm going to skip over one of them because I think they go together. Helping others gives success to meaning. And then the one I'm going to skip to is when we give, we receive many times over because a lot yeah. of people... A lot of people see us giving and they don't get it. They're like, well, why do you do that? You don't get anything for it. So I'll let you dive into that one. Yeah, and I think this is one of the ways that you and I align, um, actually, because I mean, even this podcast that you're giving service out into the universe of how to how to be better in our business and how to master the art of real estate, literally. The um, I, I think that uh, when we offer of free of heart, that we're really there just to, how else can I help? Can I give, uh, can I rest in my heart and help you for what you need? Not what am I going to get out of it, but what do you need? Because when I start being, I, I, I would say almost selfless, I don't know if it's hundred percent selfless, but um, if you're, if I'm giving of heart, I find that it comes back no matter what. And sometimes agents say, you know, I do all this effort and nothing comes of it. I'm like, oh, that's not true. It's compounding. And it's in the background out in the universe and it's going to come back tenfold if you do this right and just keep giving it comes back for sure there's no yeah. doubt in my mind there i know and there's no doubt in my mind and yeah uh, we'll we'll get in in a little bit after the commercial <laughs> we'll get into about you really have that compound and not only from who you are but we'll learn later who you've trained with um mm -hmm. okay next one is making transitions easier does that resonate and how, what does that mean to you yeah. So Peter Gruber once said that realtors are um, emotional transportation specialists. And <laughs> I really see our job as not just um, a financial transaction at all. You think about the, the consumer, the clients, they're moving emotionally, physically, and financially. Their entire universe is going from one box to another. And that needs a guide, a doula, so to speak. And so I really think that that 
transportation, so to speak, that we're helping people with. I mean, it comes from a spark of a thought. I want to move. I want to buy. I want to sell. Now, how do they do those next steps? How do they actually emotionally, physically, and financially move from point A to point B? And I feel like that's a, the bulk of our job is helping them in those three areas. Oh my God, I love that. I'm going to take notes out there. And that, that is so exceptional. Transportation in all three aspects. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Okay. And one of my other favorites and the reason why, why I started this podcast, realtors are colleagues, not competitors. Does it resonate? <laughs> yes, please. We're not competitors. We're coopetition. I think our, our uh, CA, our president uh, coined that word coopetition. The, um, we, we have to cooperate. Yes, we're competing to a sense, but um, my personal mindset is there's enough to go around. There is business for everyone. It is limitless. There is always ways to help people. Um, there are plenty of people in the universe to help. And it's not a finite uh, system that there, there is always more. It's always flowing as an energy. So um, competing with somebody, there might be some good natural competition to better myself. It's like, give me a good... Uh, uh, give me good competition so I can be better at what I do. I want to compete and I want to be better. I want to keep growing. But at the same time, while we're competing as far as how we're standing out, how we're doing our business, we still have to work together. And, and that's really key during any transaction that all the parties need to work together and work through things together as, as allies and colleagues and cooperation so that we get our clients to the end game that they're both seeking. We have the same end in mind. We want the transaction to happen. Um, so we want to make sure that we're taking care along the way and really working with the other side or with the other agents. Um, I also believe in shared um, activities with agents. Why reinvent the wheel? Why do things separately? Um, and that's part of what I love about Quirk when Icon. When I come into the office, we have agents that are sharing their promos. They're sharing their ideas. They're sharing their thoughts about how to do this and being helpful in a way that's not it, just because I help you doesn't mean you're taking my business or I'm taking your business, right? So we're working together on all aspects. And I think that's important. And uh, when I first started in the business in 2001, coming from the teaching role, teachers share because there's no time to rebuild things, right? So teachers share a lot. So my natural instinct was to share right away with other realtors. And honestly, I got in trouble in my early days. Why would I share that? Why would I give my secrets to others? Why would I like spend time and, and share those things? And I, I didn't understand it and it didn't resonate. I got frustrated. I'm like, this is silly. Why should the person sitting next to me have to rebuild what I just built out? They have different clients, different farm areas. It doesn't, we're, we're working together. And so um, as I left that and grew my own company, that was one of our key tenets for the company is that we share. We would build out our promos together. We'd build out our ideas together and everyone would participate and share and have the, the fruits of all of our labor. Yep. I love that. That it's actually interesting. Um, yeah, we are all about sharing. We So when we started, before we joined Corcoran a couple of years ago, we started Highland Partners in the downturn of 08, 09. And we, uh, we made a big, this was before we work, that we opened up our space. It was all very open and it was community and no one had seen anything like it before. And then later I, I was on a news feed. It was talking about how Facebook has this open environment. And I'm like, wow, we did that before Facebook or maybe <laughs> doing it at the same time. But we have an open environment. We encourage agents, especially newer agents, to sit down next to Adam, my husband and partner and broker for just listen to Adam because he's constantly talking to many different agents or many different people in real estate locally within the office and outside of the office and, and other maybe other issues come up with deals. And he just is a wealth of information because what comes at him is always different and unique. And so if you're a new agent, you're able to get all this, you're able to hear and learn. And there's not, I mean, you never in your career probably come up with all the things that he could be teaching you if you're just overhearing the conversation. Also, it's when deals are done, when you're in the office, deals are, happen. You're, someone will say, oh, what this happened? I said, oh, I have this place I'm getting on the market in Rockridge. And then Heidi, our other partner said, oh, I have someone. We showed it and sold it. I mean, that doesn't right, exactly. happen in the office. So super important. All right. We're going to go to commercial break because I have to turn off my cell phone and we will be right back with Mickey Cardoza. Thank you. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for the Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to Mastering the Art of Real Estate. I am here with Mickey Cardoza of the Sonoma Valley area, and we are just finishing up with why it's so important that realtors are colleagues, not competitors. So I wanted to, so we work with real estate agents locally, regionally, and nationally. So tell me how you work with other agents and why it is so critical for a real estate agent to be connected both or all three locally, nationally, and regionally. Yeah, super important. Thank you. Um, so connecting with agents, having a network around the country, I think there's a shift in the consumer as well to, that this is extra important. The consumers are looking at different areas around the nation to compare when they're shopping for where they're going to live. And I think more so now than ever, that now that we can be remote while we work. And so having connections around the country, around the world actually, can increase that conversation. If I have a client who's not sure, do I want to move to Florida, Alaska, Hawaii, like where am I going to go? I can network with uh, agents in those areas that I already have within my professional network that I already know, trust, love, and, and hook them up so they can explore and, and figure out where they want to live and ultimately be and have some, um, at least some basic knowledge about the different regions around the country and its market stats and what's going on there. So I think, um, I think the consumer is expecting more of us these days that we should know more about national real estate. And then just having those connections, I mean, traveling and meeting other realtors and going to um, educational events and things where we can up our game the people that I meet there are like-minded. They're the ones that are educating themselves and networking and meeting around the world. So I think it's uh, super important as far as collaboration, cooperation. I'm, uh, for example, there's a uh, broker in Florida who uh, we're aligning on some training ideas and, and also work in that route. So I think um, an excellent realtor is going to definitely have uh, connections worldwide. We also in Corcoran Icon are fortunate to have our relocation department. That's super. They they really also have tons of connections. So if I don't know somebody, I really lean on our relo relocation department, which is awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And then just to on a um, on a local level, it's super important. So right now we have a listing, and it's getting a ton of activity. And it's nice when you know the other realtors who are calling you or they know you and you, you know, you're respectful, even though it's, you know, we have like 35 disclosure packets out and there's, you know, they know we're getting hit up. But when they call and they're saying, oh, you were so nice to me when I spoke to you before. Thank you. You know, it's a relationship business. We want we both have clients. We have a seller. They have buyers. We need to respect one another and 
you know, we don't know what the price will be, but we need to just, whatever their question is, answer their question. You know, don't, the worst thing I, the, the hate thing I dislike the most is when an agent doesn't call you back. So I like <laughs> right away, okay. give them the information. I mean, it may, doesn't it make you crazy if an agent has no respect for the other, the other agent? <sighs> Yeah, I want to I want to really lean into this question for a second because um, one, yes, it shows a lot. In, in my opinion, it shows a severe lack of professionalism. Plus, it doesn't serve their clients when they're not communicating. Um, I bumped into an agent ten days ago. I've been trying to get a disclosure packet, and just no no reply. No, you know, here's my client interested. They've since moved on, which they lost our potential buyer. Um, we've they found something else, which luckily my buyers. We just kept moving, but. Um, at the same time, when I checked in again yesterday, she just said, oh, sorry, they took it off the market. They've changed their mind. You think she could have told me that and communicated that? So simple. Two but minutes. Think, we have text. We have text. Yeah, two minutes. Like, and that's oh. what she did. Like, I checked in again. She's like, oh, never mind. So, but I think, you know, that's that's a negative story. I want to talk about where if we're communicating well, and I, and I teach this forward too, if you're volunteering, you're connecting, you're networking, you're getting to know the agents around your local community, and you're spending time, you're going to, to broker tours and meeting the agents there and checking out their listings and trading information and then you present an offer to that agent and let's say you have two competing offers and they're exactly the same terms and your offer because you've been out in the field and networking getting to know people that agent knows you they trust you and so now they're taking the two offers that are identical they put them in front of their sellers and a simple comment of this agent i know she shows up i get to talk to her all the time she's a good communicator she's present this agent i've never met before which offer would you like, seller? Exactly. That's it's so I, I definitely win. Somebody actually commented in our office the other day. When you are respected in your community, you will win more offers just because people respect you and they know that you can do your job and carry through and answer challenges and are kind and cooperative and all the things that make a transaction smoother. And so just by having those solid relationships around town, I'm sure I win more. I've been told. We, they want you because I spoke about how you follow through and I've worked with you before and you're obviously reputable. Um, and so if you're competing against somebody, having that extra little, just that extra little um, community networking moment, it can make a big difference for your clients. Yeah, I'm glad you elaborated on that. It's so true. It's just, um, I had an issue with someone and it, it was, it, once I finally got the person on the phone, we were in a deal and I, I it couldn't, be by text. I needed to understand there needed to be more words. Like, yes, we can do a lot with text and email, but sometimes you need to hear what's going on and understand it. So she wouldn't pick up, she wouldn't pick up. So I had to call the broker and I said, I don't want to, you know, I'm not here to tattle on her. I just know there's an issue and I know if we can have a conversation, we'll get through it. Finally, the agent called me back. We had a very quick conversation. I knew what was happening immediately. The deal was up in Northern California. The father was out of LA. Soon as she said that, I knew LA and Northern California are so different. So I said, oh, I understand. And I won't go into the details, but all I did was have that conversation. I was able to explain that to my client. We were able to work through it. You can't do that over text message. You really right. have to be on the phone sometimes. So super important. Now, for example, if it was you had an offer and this other person had an offer down the road, who am I going to give it to? I'm going to give it to you because I know you communicate with me. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to communicate. That's you know, communication is key. Is my other one. We you you have to keep dialogue going. Your whether it's with the agents or of course with your clients, continuing to educate them and communicate with them. So even if love it's nothing. Yeah, even if it's nothing, sometimes like. We have nothing to report. I think it's really important to say, I'm thinking about you, I have nothing to report. Okay, thanks. I know I know there's nothing to report. I'm not looking. I, I don't want to keep my clients guessing. I don't want to keep the other agents guessing. They shouldn't exactly. be wondering what's going on with my transaction or what's going on in the background. So just a simple right. like thinking through each of my files and each of my clients and just checking in with it, even if there's nothing to report, I think is it just bodes well for communication. Exactly. Super, super important. So, okay. You have had, and you've met a lot of interesting people. You've engaged with many high level, successful, magnetic, and motivational leaders that we all know. Can you tell us about who there's three of them? I, 
that I mentioned in my notes here. And can you tell me how it's helped you with your personal life and your real estate career? Yeah, everything. Um, so I'm going to start with the easiest, littlest one first, honestly. Um, you have here just uh, wanted to hear my story about meeting um, President uh, Clinton. And it was just a one time meeting, but it was a um, it had a profound effect on me about being present in the world. Um, and so I used the, the our conversation. I was luckily to I was in a, a small, intimate atmosphere to meet him. And the the question I asked him is, how are you always so cool and calm and relaxed? And because that's one thing I noticed about him. I mean, even during this event, uh, he was just in his cozy sweater and leaning back and totally relaxed and very calm, very pleasant. And he said, it's my calendar. It does all the work and thinking for me. He said, when I'm at a meeting, I'm at the meeting. I don't worry what's behind me. I don't worry about what's coming. My assistant will tap me on the shoulder and say, you have a next meeting and then I'll switch gears. He said, but when I'm with you, I'm with you. And I, I took that to heart. I had had a previous moment with some clients where it had really highlighted the fact that when you're present with your clients, that's one of the secret sauces. They don't want to know that you're distracted with other client issues or your personal life. They want to, they want to feel your presence with them. And so he just kind of, um, he profound, I mean, it was just simple. It was such a simple comment of just use your calendar. And so I've started, I started immediately like, okay, it's more than just putting it on the calendar. It's letting the calendar be your memory about what's next and not worrying about what's next in your head while you're with somebody. So um, I just love because, yeah. I started doing that because of you. I love yeah. that. And a few other agents um, that I've interviewed, they all said, calendar everyone seems to be calendaring. I was not, but obviously reinforcing it with President Clinton and and yeah. and just how he he just is not bothered by anything. He's just there. And then when it's time, he'll he'll go there. So that is so impactful. I love yeah. it. I love that it. was a that was a great moment. Um and then uh Tony Robbins, I was uh I had a fortunate opportunity, an incredible opportunity, thanks to my my previous company, my Mickey Moves team, encouraging me to do this program. So thank you, MMOGs. Uh, they, they, um, they really encouraged me to take this year uh, as, as the owner. And I spent a year traveling with the Platinum Partner Program with Tony Robbins. It was expensive. It was intense, like amazing intense, like so much work, so much work. It's probably the hardest year I spent in my entire life. And um, one of the things that Tony would do is just really push us. He'd really question where you are and why aren't you thinking deeper? Why aren't you asking better questions? Um, why aren't you taking better care of yourself? Why aren't you, sh you know, showing up stronger, better? Like he's just pushes. And it was, it was, um, we would travel the world. He'd have different programs and different lessons. And, and each week we were going somewhere with a cohort of about a hundred uh, platinum students together. And we had amazing adventures. We went, um, particularly one adventure that stands out is uh, we spent a week in New Zealand with our Platinum Partner classmates. And the context of the week was to uh, control the chemical response of fear within your body. That was, that was the, the theme of the week, controlling fear in your body. And um, our lecturer was Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I had never heard of him before this. I had never met him before. And I got to meet him at another intimate setting. That's uh, where we were having dinner and he was lecturing and we were meditating. He's a, uh, that's part of what he does is meditate a big, he teaches meditation and how to use it to impact your whole world. And I had never really meditated before this, but he taught us how to chemically control the chemical response of fear in our body through subconscious thought. And so I learned a lot during that trip about myself, about um, how to do that. And what taking on his practice over the years and really studying Dr. Joe and spending time going to his workshops and reading all of his books and um, meditating, uh, almost every day. It's not every day anymore, but almost every day. Um, it's changed again, how I'm showing up. I'm present and I'm not afraid that I can, if I feel fear, I know how to reverse it chemically in my body, the way I stand, the way I think that whatever's going on. 
Um, and so you can, you can actually control all of the chemical responses in your body. Um, it's kind of like your own little pharmacy in there. And you don't need anything from the outside. It's just through your thought process and how you're subconsciously teaching your body to respond to these things. So that, of course, was huge in developing that skill so that even the toughest of days, the worst moments that you might imagine show up, I remind myself I'm in control of how I'm going to respond to this. I am totally in control of how I'm going to respond to this. And if I'm present and I'm calm and I keep the, the right chemicals flowing through my body during this, I have less stress. I have less, less health issues. Um, I can manage through intensely difficult days and uh, lots of switches and changes because of that, ex uh, that learning experience. And then with um, Tony, of course, and the way he pushed us, it's constantly connecting, it's constantly thinking about how you can up your game, even if it's just 1%, just a little tiny compounding effort each day. So, you know, stacking your habits and, and introducing habits just one at a time and really taking time to think through who do you wanna be when you show up, right? And I'm between Tony and Joe, Dr. Joe, that who do I wanna be when I show up? It makes a difference how I wake up in the morning because how am I gonna approach my day? Who am I today and how am I gonna show up and be present for that? Love it. It's amazing. And where did you travel? Where were all the places you traveled? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, uh, all over the nation, of course. And then we also went uh, with my Tony experience. I went to um, Amsterdam. I went to New Zealand. I went to, I think, London. Um, oh my gosh. There, there were, there were fun. I mean, it was, it was gone for how long was this trip? Um, each trip was about a week long, depending where it was and what was going on and um, what event it was. Um, and so, and it was just constant. And what else came constant from that and still today are small breakout groups with my classmates. So I'm still in touch with many of my classmates. I nice. do real estate sales with my classmates because they're high net worth and they're, they're super cool and they're strong and they understand investing and, you know, make are quicker to make decisions because of our training and because of how, I mean, there's a lot of training on how to run your business as a business. One thing I want to say, Debbie, is when I signed up to take that year with Tony mm -hmm. and travel and be a platinum partner, I thought I was doing it to up my business. I was looking for a coach. I was looking for help to manage a company and a growing company that I had big plans for. What I realized about four months in is it had nothing to do with growing my business. It had everything to do with growing me. Wow. And, and I learned to, somebody once asked a, a new a classmate came in, I remember in Amsterdam, we were walking and he said, well, what's the, what's this thing you got out of th this program so far? And I said, honestly, it's moving from my head to my heart. And Tony used to say that when I first met him, get out of your head, you're dead, get into your heart, be smart. You know, like, wow. um, and I didn't know right. what that meant. I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't, it didn't make sense. Now I get it. You drop into your heart, you go with love, you like expand your energy out there. You rest in that heart space as opposed to thinking through everything. I mean, the universe has it. The universe knows what to do. That's Dr. Joe's teaching. Um, and so when you can get out of all that thought and analytics and all the stuff that tends to go on in our head, and I was really before I went to that experience, I was very um, masculine masked. Another thing I learned about what's masculine feminine. I have no idea what he's talking about. Then I got it because he taught us how to be more feminine, how to be, you know, how to understand your mask that you're wearing and how to break through it. And so I learned to put my hair down. I learned to rest a little. I learned to just be a little more feminine and understand the power and energy of being feminine. Because there's a lot in there that I never understood before my, my trainings with Tony. Um, I was purely like compete with the boys out there. You know, I just, you know, I, I felt like I had to constantly be analytical and constantly driving like a, a male energy. And it, it served me to a degree, but I could feel the stress of that. And then learning how to be um, kind of more in my feminine energy, it opened up a lot of opportunities that I didn't expect. And so wow. it's just, flowing with who we are and understanding who we are and how we navigate through the universe and really um i guess the ultimate is resting in our heart and coming from a place of love and service and everything mm -hmm. else just falls into place and i'll add one more word to that kindness kindness is important kindness. yes <laughs> all right we got to jump to commercial break that was so exciting and we will be right back sure dr rc 
will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Network and tune in radio as Dr. RC will provide thought provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Author, radio show host, and coach. John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Mastering the Art of Real Estate. We are here today with Mickey Cardoza, of the Sonoma Valley. She's out of our Santa Rosa office for Corcoran Icon Properties. And she is also not only a very successful realtor, she's also a very successful coach. And so there's no one better to ask, ask the next couple questions. So agents are always seeking to grow their business, whether they're a seasoned agent or a brand new agent. How do we go? I want to ask, give me your five top things that agents should do to nurture and continue to grow their business. Okay. Number one is show up. Yes. <laughs> like just show up. Um, I, I think, don't you know, sit at home. don't sit at home, <laughs> don't, don't sit at home under the covers. I mean, maybe once a month, take a drool day, but, um, you gotta be out. You gotta be present. You gotta have FaceTime. Um, yes. so getting out in the, in the world, like whether it's playing or volunteering or showing up to real estate events and networking, um, going, know your, that's another one is know your market to be successful. Um, but, but show up, show up with full heart and full inclination. Um, just give it your best every day and watch your hours on your calendar. And sometimes agents come to me, um, asking for a boost and say, you know, I, I'm just not getting enough business. I say, well, let's look at your calendar and we'll come back to calendar first. Um, and there are no real estate appointments on there. You know, they're taking kids, they're going to the, whatever they're doing. But when you really look at how much time are you actually spending in your business and on your business versus just waking up in the morning? So show up. That's the first one. Um, and show up to the office, show up to where realtors are hanging out. So you can do those off market sales and networking and things like that. So, and people get to know you. Um, so that's number one, number two, um, to grow your own business. I really believe health first. Um, uh, an unhealthy agent is not going to be strong for negotiations. They're not going to be strong to show up as their best self. And so I really think first and foremost is be healthy on the inside with your relationships, with your, your physical health, with your mental health, you've got to take care of you first. And I think that's the most important uh, appointment of your day is your personal appointments. Don't erase those. I know young moms, single moms, I was a mom, we had five kids, right? So, um, they're, they're, there's a tendency to want to do for others first. And what I figured out over time was it actually makes more sense to take care of me first, put the oxygen mask on first, stay healthy so that I'm a stronger human to take care of others. And it really makes a difference on the days I'm not healthy. Negotiations go south. It's tougher conversations. I end up crying. It's not good. So stay healthy on the inside first. Yeah, that's, so that's number sure. two. Um, number three is call the people you haven't talked to in a long time 
and then just eat krill right out of the box, right? So <clears throat> um, we, uh, I like to teach forward the Ford script. It's simple. If I haven't talked to somebody a long, in a long time, I write the word Ford on a big piece of paper. I dial the phone. Oh, I'm scared. I haven't talked to you in 10 years, right? Some past client, some past person from other lifetimes. I get the elephant out of the room right away. Hey, I haven't talked to you in a long time. My bad. Let's fix that. How's what your family? What is Ford? Ford? How's your family? That's the F Ford. for Ford. Oh, okay. So it's reminding me questions to ask that other human about. It's like, oh. hey, I haven't talked to you in 10 years. I can't even believe that time's gone so fast. My bad. I'm fixing that now. How's your family? Right. And then they tell me about their family. And this is something every agent can use. As they're telling me about their family, I'm listening for trigger words to help with real estate. Oh, the kids moved to college. Did you consider an investment property where they're moving to? Is it time to right size your house now that you're empty nesters, right? So you're listening right. for trigger words as you're asking questions about their family and staying engaged and listening. The O stands for occupation. So how's your job going? What's going on in your career lately? And then again, listen for trigger words. How can you help with real estate? Oh, I'm working from home now and I don't have private office space. I can help with that, right? We can find a place that has. So um, if you're talking about their job, R stands for recreation. What are you doing for fun or what have you been doing for fun? Um, and then uh, D stands for dreams. What are your big plans and goals over the next couple of years? And again, each question I'm listening for trigger words, but it creates a conversation and it's easy to remember. I don't have to think about anything, especially when I'm nervous because I haven't spoken to them in 10 years, right? So that's, that's, awesome. a, that's I love that. That is so great, Mickey. That is fabulous. Family, uh, occupation, rec recreation, and dreams. That's and dreams, awesome. right. Um, the next thing is be a, a really excellent listener. So um, there's something I think of called seven questions deep, where we're answering, or excuse me, asking questions. And there's there's this idea that by asking the better questions, you're controlling the conversation. And so... Um, instead of worrying about what to say, which a lot of newer agents do, I'm afraid of what I should say. What am I going to say? What if I don't know the answer? I'm like, there's nothing to know. All you have to know is what questions to ask. And those can be made up in advance, right? What questions am I going to ask? But not only can you have some pre-planned questions to control the conversation and find out and understand your clients better, you can also do um, an active listening exercise that I call seven questions deep, where no matter what that person says, you only ask a question about that. You're not changing the course of the conversation. You let the answer -er change the course of the conversation. And so uh, it'll, it'll help with listening in general, that you're, you're taking a moment to ask a question, they answer it, you ask a question about that, whatever their answer was, and then they answer you again, you ask a question about that, whatever their answer was. There's no script for that because you don't know what they're gonna say in advance, so there's nothing to pre-plan to ask. So I think active listening and really showing up and asking the right questions can really help nurture and grow your business. Um, looking through your database, like your database is gold. It's t truly a gold mine. If you look at everyone in your database, um, can you wake things up? Can you revive uh, relationships? Can you just check in with people and start calling? And it, it's funny because as you get better and better at this and more and more experienced, I don't know about you, but if I call somebody, they're going to be transacting before the end of the day, even if they weren't thinking about me. And it's just like this natural, like, oh yeah, actually I'm glad you called. I haven't spoken to you in a while. And I was just wondering what's this house worth? Maybe we should sell it. Let's talk about. So just really um, don't be afraid. Have your, I, I like to write down, I kind of brainstorm each evening and each morning people I just want to check in with. I just write a list of names. I try to get to 30. It's pretty easy to get to 30 to 50 names of people I need to check in and call. Um, and then I just tick through the list and I usually get through like five or six and I've got so many appointments booked. I got to take a break and do it again tomorrow. So it's important to keep it full. I do believe for an agent to nurture and grow their business, more appointments, more appointments, more appointments. Focus on getting appointments because appointments will transact. I like to say, there are five major stages in real estate. You have the closing, that's our scorecard. That's what we wanna to get to, right? That's our closing, our volume. Our clients are happy because they got what they wanted. And so we get to closing, that's the end game. But to get there, you cannot get to a closing without a contract. And so how do you get to it? So you have to have that stop, stop of contract, but you can't get to a contract without 
an appointment or and you can't get oh sorry it's closing to escrow to contract you can't get to an escrow without the contract and you can't get to the contract without an appointment you can't get to an appointment without a lead or a connection but leads and connections are everywhere they're limitless right we could have a million leads in our pipeline if we're not making appointments they don't count and so really i like to focus to or and i like to see the, the agents who want to grow and nurture their own business start filling up your calendar triple your appointments and see what happens just make appointments get in the habit of getting everybody to the appointment when you're leaving somebody when will i see you again and get another appointment on your calendar before they even leave you so you have a next time to check in right so i, I think appointments are the name of the game really these are amazing tips these are so great so because we're talking about you just ended with leads and getting appointments so what what do you recommend what do you do and what do you recommend that agents do to get involved so they can meet people so they can get leads so they can make appointments and exactly so <laughs> and that's why i say go play just go play do the things you love whatever they are if it's going to dog parks if it's cooking classes if it's running clubs it's kayaking it's hiking it's reading clubs um if sewing clubs i don't care what it is go do things that you enjoy because you're going to be your most vibrant happiest self in that environment you're going to meet like-minded people you're going to share casual conversation if i can't believe this happened at my listing or it's not that you're selling you're connecting and teaching them through that connection that you um, help with real estate and so and it's and it's really it's not like do you want to buy or sell that's not what it's about it's about nurturing connections in the places that you love volunteer i actually get most of my business through volunteer it's not interesting. It's like, I'm just going doing something I love to do. And I'm naturally, sometimes I forget to take off my name tag. That's cool. Right. So I leave that on. Um, I, I make casual comments of like, oh my gosh, I, I saw like an elk at my showing this morning. That was cool. And they're like showing what, right. So creating curiosity with conversation. Um, and so just getting out there and getting FaceTime in the world and finding things you love to do. So it's fun and you're attracting like-minded people. On the flip side, I, I do want to mention, I, I would say I have gotten amazing appointments and leads from the DMV line, from the grocery store line, from the gas station line, and it's oh. not that hard. It's really oh, like, uh, what are you saying? I have never done that before. What are everyone. you saying? To people? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Okay, so gas station lead one time, and, and this is before cell phones. So there's been others, though, if you're like standing at your car and you're, you know, just curiosity questions to the neighbor. But one time um, somebody was using the payphone at the gas station and I was watching him flip through the real estate magazine, make a call. And then he'd flip through the magazine and make a call and flip through the magazine. And I'm filling up my gas tank. And so I walk over to him. I said, it looks like you're looking for real estate. He said, yes. I said, here's my card. What are you looking for? So we're casually, he ended up buying and selling, buying and selling twice over. So, um, so that was, um, I was in the DMV line. This is during the boom. So there was some, some positive, like, I mean, I was crazy business during the boom and I was so tired. And so like, every time I talk to somebody that want to do business, I think it comes from that magical, vibrant energy of just being present in your heart, right. And talking real estate. Um, and so I'm in line and I'm, I'm decided I'm going to close my eyes and cross my arms because if I engage another person, I can't, I can't handle anymore. I'm full. <laughs> and so I cross my arms. I close my eyes. I'm shuffling in the DMV line. I get to the front of the line and my phone rings and I had been trying to reach this buyer all day. His escrow had closed. I needed to figure out the key transfer. And I said, I'm so sorry. I know it's my turn. I just quit. You know, like, hi, yes, I got your keys. I'll meet you at four o'clock. Thanks. Bye. Hang up the phone. Okay. I'm back to my appointment. And the lady looks at me behind the counter. She says, are you a realtor? And I said, yes. And she said, my mom needs to list a duplex by the university and we haven't found a good realtor. Could you come over tonight and interview? And I was like, oh, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up getting that listing and selling that duplex. So, um, so it's like, you just, leads are everywhere. I just really want to put that out there. New agents, experienced agents, stop trying so hard to find the leads. They're out there floating all around you. Are you ready to receive the opportunity? Are you in a space where you're open enough or you're ex uh, confident enough with the contracts? Are you confident enough to ask good questions so that the opportunities aren't going by you and you're going like this without even, you know, just subconsciously, I'm not ready for that opportunity. I can't handle it. And they just walk on by you, right? 
great. Those are such great stories. Oh my God, you're so funny. <laughs> All great, such great information. Okay, now let's get into where you work this is my i saw the travel portion of the show where we get to learn all about the santa rosa sonoma valley and who you serve so let's talk about the cities towns communities you serve what do you love about the santa rosa sonoma valley yeah San, and sonoma county actually um okay. so the uh the things i love about where i live is walkability it's fabulous. I did not expect this. I, I moved from Humboldt to Santa Rosa about seven years ago. And my love of Humboldt was amazing. We had rivers and beaches and my grandkids are there and I raised my children there. And But um, about seven years ago, we needed to move to about four hours away to Sonoma County to be near my husband's parents who were aging. And I was nervous. We're moving from country, beauty, you know, redwoods and beaches and all that to more of a metropolitan area. We have about 180,000 or so in Santa Rosa proper and probably about 300,000 in the county. What I didn't expect was how rural it felt, even though it's metropolitan. So now I have the best of both worlds. We have the trees, the redwoods, the beaches, the rivers, all those places to play. Their um, rural property sales are actually more prolific here in Sonoma County than Humboldt, which intrigued me. Um, and even outside my own backyard, I can just right there is a path that goes on for miles along of our creek beds i can walk all the way to work along the creek trails from my house about three miles it's just beautiful interconnectedness we have some large park areas that are hundreds of uh, just huge huge amounts of acreage that just roll right into one park to another to another so you can hike and backpack for days right out the back door or come into town and have you know a a good drink and some music and some you know good theater whatever and we're only an hour north of san francisco so it's not unreasonable to go to san francisco for for fun for a dinner evening or a play or something and still come back home so it's super cool um awesome. yeah i really love it here and the weather yeah. is amazing the weather right. is just, so yeah, amazing. The weather. Yeah. yeah it's such a it is a yeah. mix of both um where do your clients come from buyer sellers where are they coming from yeah, most of them are repeat and referral. That's the bulk of my business. Um, mm -hmm. So I like to, uh, you know, just check in, say hi, have coffee, whatever. Um, and it's, oh, it's the other part good. of that question is let's, let's see, who is who is and it doesn't have to be your clients. It can be just who in general is moving in and out of Sonoma. Why are they moving in? Where are they oh, moving? Sure. from? So it doesn't yeah, have to be. Yeah. yeah. We have some cool stuff here. Obviously, we have our wineries. Um, though though the wine trails are amazing so we have people who are interested in the wine industry here we have uh, people having second homes or um or remote workers it is pricier than a lot of places around the country so there is that challenge of having enough housing in the right price points for even our service industry um, which can be challenging but overall most of our buyers either lived here grew up here and love it don't want to leave um, or there, we have a, a good amount of second homes here and vacation homes, things like that. So that's a, a piece of it. Um, people moving from cold areas want to get warm. We see that. Uh, I have people that are down, not downsizing, but moving lifestyle. Like for today, I have a closing this week. They're selling in um, Milpitas area, so a little bit more uh, city, and coming north of the Golden Gate to. Um, to retire essentially in a beautiful, very country-esque setting with redwoods and gorgeous property, but it's gonna be a lifestyle shift. Uh, so just- have, Did you have a lot of people relocating after COVID or during COVID to come up there? Yes, yes, boom time during COVID. People moving out of, out of the inner cities and can work from anywhere. So we had a, a huge boom after at during COVID of people just selling in their in the city or leaving their apartments and coming and getting a house. Um, and we saw we had our we did have, of course, our fires in 2017 that reduced our housing inventory, which drove prices up as well. So our area is a little bit expensive, which is frustrating. Um, at the same time, it's so gorgeous and so beautiful and the healthiness of the lifestyle here. A lot of people bike and run and hike. And so there's a lot of outdoor living and life, healthy lifestyle here. So that can help on saving other expenses, right? Your medical expenses and your- You're on vacation all the time, permanently on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way. 
have to wrap it up. We have, I have so many more questions, but we'll, we'll do it again. So two things, if you would, we're going to give advice to your son or daughter who would want to get into the business, what would you say to them? And after that question, I want you to tell everyone how they can get a hold of you. Yes. Thank you. All right. So we have, um, uh, my, this is actually real. My, on a, my, uh, <laughs> One of one most of the children never wanted to do real estate when they watched me do this growing up. No, it's too much work, mom, which is interesting. They saw me working hard. Right. And so, yeah. but one of our kids just signed up with our academy and is making a career shift, ironically, from teaching. And I'm I don't want to give away her story. So I feel kind of even bad talking about it here. But I would say go for it. This is what I'm telling her. Go for it. You're gonna be amazing. Amazing. She's strong, she's dynamic, she's beautiful, she's healthy. And I'm just so proud of her. And she's, um, and I think, you know, she's, she's in a place in her life where this is going to make sense. And I'm super excited to see it happen. Um, That's incredible. Oh my gosh. I love that. And you got well, to just, meet my son. Just yeah. And I got to meet your son. So we'll have them meet um, when she gets her license. Yeah, she's in the academy they, right now. Then their network of people at their age. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, I would say, you know, it's it's a lifestyle choice for sure. And this is something we talked long and hard about. It's a lifestyle choice. This is not a job. It's not part time. It's not a, a, a whim here and there. It's totally a lifestyle. And it comes with benefits and it comes with challenges, right? You can you can be anywhere at any time. But sometimes you have to be there on your client schedule or you have to deal with challenges that you didn't expect and are going to take a piece of your day. And so um, I think just being ready to be present and in it to full time, like there's no question this is a full time job. Um, exactly. Yeah. So and how then, you of you? Oh, yes. There. So you can go to chat with Mickey. Um, so if you go to chatwithmickey.com, there's a calendar link. If people want to chat with me, there's a just go to chatwithmickey.com. Uh, you can also go to um, our CorcoranIcon.com website. We have an academy. If you're interested in getting a license, we can you can look for the academy under Grow With Us um, or go to chatwithmickey.com, and I'm happy to talk to you and steer you in the right direction for the academy. Uh, we have there's coaching availability. If you want coaching services, just let me know. And of course I love networking with agents all over the place for a referral business. So look me, look me up or, or hit chat with Mickey.com and just sign up for an appointment there. Love that. I'm going to go on GoDaddy right now and do chat with Debbie.com. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Cool. One of my coaches for suggested that. It's so much easier so than much like clicking information today. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. Wow. Right. It's been great. And I'll, I'll see you in a, uh, next week, I think, on the luxury real estate panel. Yes. Look forward to it at Corcoran Icon. We have our um, our weekly clinic. And so I'm looking forward to having you on our clinic to talk about luxury listing. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap with Mastering the Art of Real Estate and our guest, Mickey Cardoza. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie. That's really an honor. Thanks. <laughs> Tune in each week for another episode of Mastering the Art of Real Estate with host Debbie DiMaggio. Here Fridays, noon Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network. Tune in to where real estate matters matter.